So we have a femur here, and we're going to start off with the head, which is basically this big bulge right here. The head has a fovea on it, which is basically going to be a hole. It's going to be more less less of a hole on a real bone, but that's where the fovea is. Head, fovea, and the neck. Very simple. Head, fovea, neck, and then we're going to go to the trochanters. Now, the trochanters are kind of like the tubercles on the humerus. Um, let's go to the posterior side. We're going to have the greater trochanter, which is more lateral. And then we have the lesser trochanter, which is more medial and inferior to it. On the posterior side, we have the intertrochanteric crest. Okay, this is on the posterior side. We go flip it anteriorly. Greater trochanter, lesser trochanter. We're going to have a line right here. Intertrochanteric line. So, anterior, and you can tell, this is more of a line, while this is more of a ridge, a crest. Now we have our linea aspia. It's going to be running along the posterior side, and if you had a real bone, it would be really, really prominent, okay? It's just along the shaft right here, linea aspia. Um, after that, we have a gluteal tuberosity, again, Let's take the humerus into account. The humerus had a deltoid tuberosity, and that's on that was on the lateral side, kind of like midway through. This one's going to be a little bit higher up. You can sort of see kind of like a, a a bump, but like I said, on a real bone, you would definitely be able to see it. I don't think he's going to ask that for the test. But if you need to know, that is the gluteal tuberosity. Okay, it's posterior, and it's actually a little bit superior to the where the linea aspia is, so right around this area right here. We have then our spiral or pectineal line. This is going to be posterior and medial, inferior to the lesser uh, trochanter. So you can see sort of something here that's coming towards the linea aspia. This kind of line right here is the pectineal or spiral line. It's going into a spiral and that's really good. That's where it is. Um, next, we have the popliteal surface. We go down more distally on the posterior side. It's just going to be the smooth part right here where the popliteus muscle will be. That's the popliteal mu uh, surface. Posterior, inferior, is just after that uh, linea aspia. We have then our adductor tubercle. If you're thinking about this, we obviously now know that it's a right femur. So if you want to check out where the adductor tubercle is, you want to go on the medial side. So, medial side of the femur, this tubercle right here, is the AD ductor, ADD ductor tubercle. Um, after that, we have the medial and lateral condyles, okay? Medial is this one, where the adductor tubercle is, and lateral condyles, where on the lateral side. We flip it up. Uh, anteriorly, we have the popli or, sorry, the patellar surface where the patella is going to sit, and we have our epicondyles, which are right here. Condyles are what articulate with the tibia, and the epicondyles are going to be right here, medial, right where that adductor tubercle is, and then the lateral epicondyle. Intercondylar notch. Well, if we go with the condyles are, this is where the intercondylar notch is. And we had a uh, supracondylar lines on the humerus. It's the same thing with the femur. So from the linear aspia, we trail these two lines down. We're gonna have a medial uh, supracondylar line, and we're gonna have a lateral supracondylar line. This is really prominent on a on a real bone. So that's basically it. You'll just follow the linea aspia laterally and medially.